Sama. I guess she she had to pay because in five uh, in uh, how what's the time? Five minutes and thirty four. Didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Go. 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 Here I am back with my good friend Ricardo Corbucci. We're taking on another challenge. It's a fish and chips challenge. Now this challenge has two very large pieces of fried fish, a very large order of French fries, some tartar sauce, and it basically has a French fry sandwich, which is what this looks like here. You also have to do an order of mushy peas, and you have to do a can of soda, which we both picked Diet Coke. So we're looking you're looking at us at a small table, so this is both of our uh, challenges smashed up together. The restaurant has only one individual table, and the rest is counter space, and a family was very nice to get up from the table so we could film there, so we really appreciate that. You can see them in the pictures. Here they actually stayed to watch us do the challenge. And uh, the day was a very hot day. It was July 5th, the day after the Nathan's contest, and we had a use the public transportation to get here. So I was hot before I even walked into this place. And then the food, I didn't realize, we had tried to let it cool for a while, but the food stayed very, very warm, especially the fish and the mushy peas. I knew that, so I was waiting to eat those last, hoping they would cool down some. But I think I made a mistake in not opening up the fish, the, the breading on the fish first, and let some of that steam and uh, heat out. But I'm working through the fries first, my fries, the plain ones, and then I'm gonna work on the French fry sandwich, which the sandwich part is what they added to this challenge. So probably about 30 people have completed the challenge successfully, but only two people completed the new challenge where they added a basket, which has a, a huge French fry sandwich. I don't know how, what else to call it. So they made the challenge bigger, and they also chopped five minutes off the time. So it's more food, less time to eat. As I said, it's a very small store, and I want to thank Ibna for recording on her cell phone. We had set up tripods in there, and it was just hard to move around. And thankfully, Ibna uh, pulled out her phone to, to record some of this footage. Otherwise, you'd just see people standing in front of our tripods and go grows. Uh, not being ignorant, just there was no place to stand in the restaurant, because we were occupying most of the restaurant. So the way the restaurant's designed, this was really the only place we could both eat together and be in the same camera frame. The table though probably needed to be at least 50% bigger than it was, so our food ended up being right on top of each other. And I don't know about Ricardo, but I felt very awkward eating like this. I felt self-conscious that every time I picked up french fries, I didn't want to be adding my french fries to his if I was dropping them. It just felt strange. I don't think it really affected my time or his time, but I've never been in an eating challenge where we're so close together and the food is right on top of each other. The record for this version of this challenge is 12 minutes and 45 seconds, and we're six minutes in now. I'm thinking we both have a great shot at beating that time. Ricardo, I noticed, picks up his fish, but he immediately puts it back down saying that it's too hot still. Uh, and that's a concern for me because I do not take hot temperatures very well in these contests. I'm already breaking a sweat just eating these french fries that were warm. And you're thinking, ah, I, maybe we're not going to do uh, under 12.45, but I'm not at all concerned with the 15 minutes because now I've finally done my fries and I can put those in the past. All I have left now is my fish and my mushy peas. And Ricardo's pretty close to me as well. 
You can see that I'm having problems with the temperature of the fish. I even resort to putting ketchup directly on the inside of the fish where I was going to bite just to try to put a little bit of coolness on my tongue when I took the bite of the fish. That breading was very thick on the fish and it acted like an insulating blanket. So that interior fish, which was just huge chunks of, of fish, which tasted good, it was just very hot. I think, as I said earlier, if I would have opened up all that outside coating right from the start and then just let it sit there, it would have been better. And you can see Ricardo is, is not touching his fish either, trying to allow it to cool down somewhat. At this point, I decided to switch it up and actually just remove the exterior coating and eat that first and allow the actual fish to cool off in the air. Uh, and then Ricardo started on his fish. As I said, we're, we're really close when we're doing this uh, as far as comparison. And I know he's having an issue with his fish still as well. Sorry for the people that popping in front of the, the camera there. Like I said, it was very tight in the restaurant and I tried to edit this so I have that as little as possible. But it, it was fun having uh, about 10 people there watching us the entire time and cheering us on. You'll notice I'm just eating white pieces of fish now. These are all the chunks of fish that I let cool off a little bit. It seemed to work easier even though it's much harder to break some apart than go back and get another piece. Much rather prefer to eat like Ricardo is doing right now, but I think he's having issues with each bite, just how hot it is uh, once you get it on the back of your tongue and you're trying to swallow it. Uh, we did have the sodas, which were mandatory, of course, to drink, which was nice, and we had the water off camera there on that bar behind us. So I just had the mushy peas coming up last as I think Ricardo has uh, about half a cup of his mushy peas as well. I find this part funny that I'm struggling with peas, which is the last thing to do. I absolutely love peas. I can just open a can of peas and eat it as a snack. I can't get enough of them. I can easily eat 15, 20 pounds of peas. I just love them so much. But I am struggling with a small cup of mashed up peas just because of the temperature. If you watch Ricardo's face when he gets to just the, the uh, fish left here, you can see that he's still struggling with the temperature. I'm not sure what special fish or peas they use for this, but th they really retain heat. Well, I'm gonna let this rest of the video play out, but before I do, I really wanna thank Ricardo for doing this challenge with me as we were back in his Airbnb looking for places to go. This was the absolute last choice he had because he really does not like to eat fish. But the other ones we're trying to get to were not available at the time we were trying to go. So he agreed to do this fish challenge with me. So when you see that I finished before him, please take into consideration that Ricardo really doesn't like fish. So this was more my challenge than his. Thanks again, Ricardo, and I'll see you guys again soon. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, killed it, you guys! I've done challenges all over the place, but rarely ever do you get really good quality food like this. Usually it's just something made really large, but this is an actual food like they serve it, and it's fantastic. I'm not thinking the fish, because I generally don't get fish fried like this that taste like I like, but this is fantastic. I want to come back here sometime and actually just sit here and eat one really slow and enjoy it. This is a salt and battery in New York City. Please. If you're in the area, please come and try out the food. You're not going to be disappointed. And check out Ricardo's channel. Links in the description below. And, I'm, and the address and all the information on salt and batteries also in the description below. See you again next time.